First of all, hello, my name is Lance Warren. I'm a research librarian and an archivist at Burns and McDonald, Kansas City, Missouri. A little background on Burns and McDonald is a family of companies um, of about 7,600 people consisting of engineers, construction professionals, architects, planners, technologists, support personnel and scientists who design and build critical infrastructure. Uh, we have about 60 offices throughout the world. We were founded in 1898 and we're 100% employee owned. Just want to thank up front Stephanie Martin, current president, Sagamon County Historical Society, as well as conversations I've had in the past with the past president, Vicki Whitaker, and appreciate the opportunity to spend a little time talking about Springfield Project Lake Springfield and with some focus on the actual Lindsay Memorial Bridge and how Burns McDonald was a part of the process. Uh, I'm trying to advance. There we are, okay. <laughs> First of all, the original idea for con con constructing a lake in Springfield with a sufficient fresh water supply, facilities for water sports and adjacent lake and an adjacent lakeside cottages began with a report published around, I've seen two places, 1923 or 25, by a local city planner named Myron H. West. Nice little picture of him. But it wasn't until 1928 that the city of Springfield seriously considered West's recommendations. In the same year, the city retained two engineering firms to conduct an extensive study, provide a report for proposed impounded water supply and determine the best process and location for construction. The two firms consist, as you can see, Pierce, Greeley, and Hansen of uh, Chicago, Illinois, and Burns McDonald Engineering Company of Kansas City, Missouri. Both the reports, the firm's reports, confirmed that the current source of water supply was grossly inadequate to sustain, to sustain the city's growing needs, and that a new lake should be established in the Sugar Creek Valley for approximately, with of approximately 10 billion gallons. As an aside, I want to mention our friend here, Willis J. Spaulding, who was the commissioner of public property. Looks like he's holding a glass of water there. He was a an ardent proponent of the Sugar Creek Valley location. There had been a couple other locations, um, the Sagamon Vi Ri River, I guess, in general, as well as the South Fork of the Sagamon River. Okay. Tell you a little bit about uh, 1929, a little background on Burns McDonald uh, at the time. Burns McDonald was selected to design the, the, the entire project uh, along with the, the assorted uh, other structures and facilities. Later, the firm was again engaged to design the Fox Road Bridge, which uh, later became titled or named the Vashel Lindsay Bridge. And who exactly was Burns and McDonald? I'll give you a little background. Burns and McDonald was founded by these two gentlemen here in 1898, Kansas City, Missouri. That's R.E. McDonald on the left and Clinton S. Burns on the right. They had m met at Stanford University where they both graduated in 1897. The two young men became acquainted probably in various classes they had there. And after refining their skills working for the city of Palo Alto, California, where Stanford is, the two wanted to continue their partnership by starting a, a new engineering company. They chose Kansas City, Missouri uh, to set up shop because at the time it provided the most potential clients. Here's their first headquarters. Uh, and the reason for their area of expertise was gonna be in water and sewage. Um, on April 1st, 1898, with an accumulated savings of $1,000, which is not really bad in 1898, that's about $31,000 plus. They set up shop here at the New England Life Building, which is still around in downtown Kansas City. Their first major project consisted of the design of a combined water and light plant in the city of Iola, Kansas in 1900. The power plant made use of the first high-speed direct current engines west of the Mississippi. Just give you a little additional background, a little context. That's where we were during the time of the Lake uh, Springfield project, which I know started about 1932, but uh, well, I guess we were commissioned in 29, but 
we were there from 33 to 47. You can see the Carmen building downtown Kansas City. Also, give you another sense of context, the market saturation, Burns and McDonald, 1932, uh, the extent of where our flag was planted, you could see was in the continental United States, some of the northeastern states we had yet to make, have a project there. The, as far as countries outside the US, you could see there, Mexico, that was the extent. We'd had a couple engagements in Mexico. So as of 1932, our areas of expertise, waterworks, special projects, uh, which included, we'll see, bridges, the sanitary, we had sanitary projects, electric projects, appraisals. This gentleman, Clarence S. Timonis, he was responsible basically for supervising the entire Lake Springfield project. Give you a little background on him. He was a graduate of MIT, Massachusetts Institute of Technology, as well as Harvard University. Smart guy. After service in World War I in the Navy, he came to work for Burns McNaughton in 1918. He had a broad knowledge of engineering subjects and specialized in hydraulics, sanitary, and structural engineering designs. In 1930, he became a junior partner with Burns McDonald, and he had charge of the entire project, including the Lake Springfield project, including surveys, designs, general supervision, uh, for example, of the, of the dam, the Lake Springfield dams. There were a couple we'll find out about, the water treatment plant, the and pumping station, the municipal electric plant, the Lindsay Bridge, and, and so on. In 1930, Lake Springfield's proposed financing was presented to the voters of Springfield in the form of a bond issue at a price tag of 2.5 million. That's about 40 million in 2021 dollars. 60 percent of the voters overwhelmingly supported the initiative. Soon after, about 116 tracts of land controlled by 110 owners were purchased uh, for the New Lake area and immediately followed with additional engineering studies, surveys, designs, and then finally construction. Here's a neat little layout, general layout of the, of the uh, power plant. You can see some of the trees that they were proposing to, to reforest the area with. Uh, anyway, ultimately the Lake Springfield project, as it became known, consisted of constructing two dams for enclosing the lake along with an accompanying spillway, six new highway bridges, and the reconstruction of one railroad bridge, 25 modifications to existing highways, including the relocation of seven miles of a nearby Route 106. I'll show you some other photos. Uh, this is a great shot. Uh, an aerial you can see on the left, the city dock. This is after completion, I'm assuming around 1936, 1935. You can see straight up the, um, in the center, the power plant, or the, excuse me, the water, lakeside water purification plant. To the right, you can see the smoke billowing out of the stack there, the power plant. And then right above it to the left, you can see the Spalding Dam, all of which, of course, part of the Lake Springfield project and Burns and Mac. Um, Burns McDonald designed. Here's a little close up of the Lakeside City Water Light and Power Plant in 1936. In addition, there were numerous changes made to telephone power lines, along with 25 miles of additional roads, approximately 12 miles of sewers, water purification plant, as we can see right here, which was under, under construction as of 1936. Love the little architecture, little designs in the entrance you can see there to the left. Uh, in addition, there was a large bathing beach and beach house. There's the beach house with a neat little promenade, promenade deck on the front there overlooking the lake for various events. Um, there was also bank protection of the lake perimeter and a large tree nursery of some 300,000 trees. Uh, due to the, the area being denuded from the construction around the lake. The new lake consisted of approximately 70 miles, here's a beautiful shot of the lake, 70 miles of the shoreline, 4,300 acres of marginal lands. The water impounded forming the lake amounted to 6,000 acre feet or 21.6 billion gallons. Show you a few more pictures. 
Here's the Route 66, one of the nine bridges designed by Burns McDonald over the Lake Springfield um, area. Pretty bridge. Here's another aerial, kind of a reverse shot of what we saw earlier, where again, you have the, uh, you could see the Spalding Dam there to the bottom left, and then right above it with, it looks again, billowing smoke there from the uh, power plant, and to the right, there's the water purification plant, and then straight ahead above it, there's the city dock. Okay. And this is a, a drawing or a diagram of the Spalding Bridge and uh, Dam. The Spalding Dam Bridge, design, uh, dedicated in honor of, as we'd mentioned earlier, public property Willis J. Spalding was one of the two dams designed by Burns and McDonald for the project and was the principal structure for holding the waters of the Springfield Lake in check. Spalding played a key role in the leadership and advocacy of the Lake Springfield project. Here's another shot of the completed uh, dam, Springfield, or the uh, Spalding Dam. The Spalding Dam was designed as an earthen structure. It was 2,000 feet long and 55 feet high. It included five automatic drum gates. I think you can see them there, one, two, three, four, five, and a spillway bridge to enable the passage of floodwaters and to ensure the level of the lake would not vary more than 12 inches during a flood. And I'll show you a series of photographs of the, uh, the dam, which is really impressive. See a couple drum gates. Okay, now among the many impressive structures designed by Burns and McDonald for the Lake Springfield project was the Vashel Lindsay Memorial Bridge. I'll have a series of, I believe it's five drawings. These were provided to me from by Amber Sabin, who um, works at the Springfield City Water Light and Power Plant. Sadly, Burns and McDonald did not retain any drawings, but thankfully now we have them in our archives, thanks to uh, Amber. This is a beautiful picture drawing an overview of the bridge, which is pretty amazing. At the time, if you look there, bottom right, little title area, it's actually named the uh, Fox uh, Road Bridge at the time, before it was renamed. Uh, the bridge was named in honor of, ultimately, uh, the Springfield's famed own poet, Vashel Lindsay, who died in 1931. Let me show you another wonderful little drawing here. These are so impressive, especially when you think about they were all done by hand before CAD CAM. <laughs> it's amazing. These are not only incredible uh, recordings of what was gonna be built, but also beautiful art. <laughs> I have great respect for the work done by the men and women. Amazing. Anyway, the bridge's structure was designed to simulate multiple arch, a multiple arch bridge consisting of a series of cantilevers with a heavy counter weighted abutments, abutments to support the lateral pressure of the arches on either side of the bridge. Uh, the spanning or length of the bridge, let me show you another drawing. Spanning or length of the bridge, uh, excuse me, spanning the length of the bridge was a roadway of 22 feet, which was 22 feet wide and five foot sidewalks on the perimeters. At its highest point, the bridge was approximately 52 and a half feet above the valley floor. Here's the only drawing we had up until the time that Amber supplied what we, supplied what we have now. Uh, and it was 32, the bridge, 32 and a half feet above the normal water surfaces of the lake. Okay, you can see it under construction at the time, the Fox Bridge, sometime in 1932. Another photograph under construction. The Lindsay Bridge was designed to join the recreation point to the west of the lake and serve to preserve one of the historic roads across the Sugar Creek Valley. This is, I wish it was a clearer picture, but you can see the entire bridge. Uh, pretty impressive. Okay. 
Now, one of my favorite shots of the bridge is amazing. The architectural decoration of the bridge's facade was subdued and generally followed classical precedents. Along with several other impressive bridges, and there were a total of nine that were designed by Burns McDonald for the Lake Springfield process, uh, project, six highway bridges, one railroad bridge, like I'd mentioned, which was reconstructed, the Route 66 or I-55 bridge, and then the Lindsay Bridge. So among the several bridges architected by, by, for the Lake Springfield project, by, at the time by Burns and McDonald, this was the first time that we had ever, based on my research, ever designed such a structure, bridges. Uh, the more, the, because of the Lindsay, um, the Lindsay, the Vashel Lindsay, excuse me, Memorial Bridge's outstanding design, construction, and aesthetic beauty. I believe it continues to be an architectural treasure and a crown jewel of the Lake Springfield area. This is really interesting. I have a series of photographs. You can see the bottom right gentleman with his cap. It looks like a 16 millimeter camera filming one day, perhaps on a weekend. You can see the bridge in the back and, and boaters on the, on the lake. Then I have a series of three photographs that show the beach house off in the distance and the background. And you can see also the beach area and then the bridge. There's that little wake area or something, looks like the jets in the middle. And then the bridge to the right with its spans, 11 spans. Looks like a boater out there. Once again, you can see the beach house and the beach in the back. Another shot. Somebody must have loved this view. <laughs> Impressive. And another shot, you see most of the spans, the 11 spans you could count from a different perspective. Sadly, the picture is a little faded. And here's a close up of, up of one of the spans. And you can see some of the facade, the architecture. These are all around 35, 36. The night shot, the only one that I have that I'm aware of in our archives. This is a really neat shot um, from a postcard from, I'm assuming, around the time. You see the beach house and then the bridge to the right there. I'd be curious to know if, because I have not sadly seen the bridge yet, if the, if the statue there the bust of, of Ashton Lindsay is still there, but it's on the west side approach to the bridge, or was at least, and you can see the bridge there to the right. As an aside, the Vashel Lindsay Memorial Bridge is yet to be formally added to the National Register of Historic Places. I thought it was. I, I did a little investigation. According to the State Historic Preservation Office of Illinois, the bridge is treated as a historic resource only for regulatory purposes. Since the bridge is much admired, from what I understand, by the residents of Springfield with good reason, someone might want to take the time to hire perhaps a preservation consultant or pursue for themselves the completion of, and submission of the form. There's examples all over the internet for uh, filling out and, and, and submitting to the National Register of Historic Places in Illinois for its addition to the National Register of Historic Places. Since it's publicly owned, anyone can nominate it. I mean, I even thought about doing it. It'd be great. Um, anyway, something to think about. Overall, Burns and McDonald was responsible for designing each of the major structures of the Lake Springfield project and served as the consultant throughout the entire construction process, lasting over a little over three years from about 1932, although we were commissioned for the project in 29 but from 32 to 35. As I mentioned earlier, Burns and McDonald junior partner, Clarence S. Timonis, here's a shot of the dedication, one of the shots. Timonis was um, one of the keynote speakers. You could see him there right behind the microphone. Uh, he had, super, like I mentioned, he, had, he super, supervised the entire project and uh, provided one of the speeches. We, we have in our archives, which is neat, the speech. Pretty nifty. Um, at the time of the lake's completion, it constituted the largest artificial body of water in the state of Illinois. This is really a neat little illustration. 
It's from a booklet, which we have called the Lake Springfield, a classic uh, municipal enterprise. enterprise. And if you could see close enough there, uh, Lake Springfield to the left, it includes a, an illustration of the Route 66 bridge, um, the, the actual Lindsay Bridge, the beach, of course, and the beach house. And you can see the lake nursery, all the, there, there's tags for each of them, them all the locations that, that identify them, the water plant, the power plant. It's really pretty nifty, I think. This is really interesting. This is just as an aside, an additional, um, additional illustration. This is in the back of the book, the Lake Springfield, a classic municipal enterprise. And it's it's kind of a it's kind of an advertisement of our company you could see at the time in 1936. It shows you at the top, you could see the names of what is it, five of our partners. At the time, we have over 15. 100 engineering projects. It says since 1897. We started in 98, 1898, but I'm assuming that's when both Burns and McDonald became engineers, became civil engineers, and then became registered engineers. You could see some of our areas of expertise at the time, water supply, water purification, and so on. And what's really interesting to note is Springfield, Illinois, since 1920. So Springfield had been a Burns and McDonald client. Now it's over 100 years. Pretty interesting. And still is, by the way. And then you can see the three different, uh, at the time, the locations, our home base, Kansas City. But we also had offices temporarily in New York and Cincinnati at the time. And a few references I've offered. Uh, Lake Springfield was filled with water to its normal level in May 1935. And as I mentioned, was dedicated in, I didn't mention, was dedicated in July of 35. And, that's it. <laughs> That's all I have. Appreciate it. Your time today. Well, thank you very much. You bet. I hope that was helpful. <laughs>